Welcome to Reality Cast. This is Evo Haining. The editing time is where I think the most value creation is happening. So we're seeing that our user, users are averaging anywhere between five and 10 minutes per of editing time per production minutes of video. The industry accepted ratio is one hour per minute or more, right? So wow. if you're trying to make, let's just say you are trying to make a new video on your homepage to promote your latest book and you, you know, you know the video is going to help because you can give your own voice over, explain what the reader is going to get out of it. Making, if you hired an agency to do that, the expected cost of a 30 second um, internet video is, is between 800 and 1200 dollars. For a TV ad, it's between five and twelve thousand dollars, right? Production time, hours to weeks. For us, everything we do is measured by minutes. So, thank you for joining me today. This is Evo Haining at Reality Craft. I am joined by Jeremy Toman at AugX Labs. Hi, Jeremy. How are you doing today? Great, Evo. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited to look at your tools and hear more about your generative team and where you've been taking the entire industry in terms of integration between media making and generative tooling and creativity as well. So I'm going to bring up your website. This is AugX Labs, and we're going to take a look uh, very briefly at what you've been creating here. Uh, for those of you who are new to the Reality Cast, uh, we are here looking at various AI and generative media tools uh, for your workflows, whether you are a creator for YouTube, whether you're publishing, we are gonna be looking at a wide variety of tools today. And Jeremy, I would love it if you could just tell us, we're gonna breeze through your website really fast here, but I was hoping you could tell us just a little bit of what we're gonna be seeing here and maybe tell us a bit about how you got started with Augie. Absolutely. Uh, what we're doing is we're basically trying to make video easier and more accessible to everybody, right? It's the number one way to accomplish any marketing goal, whether you're trying to sell a product, get a subscriber. The story of this company came out of me trying to make videos about uh, a year and a bit ago. I had been doing a podcast for a while and there was a lot of uh, uh, momentum in the podcast industry to get people to start doing more video recordings. And I was sort of scratching my head, like, I don't know if I really want to be web Mr. Webcam guy. That's just sort of not my vibe. But I did think, you know, it would be funny or, or actually interesting to an audience if instead of seeing me talk, they could see visuals, whether they're um, clips or images or, or whatever, that match the words I'm talking about. My co-founder and I started brainstorming how to do it. And basically January of last year, we started building what we now call Augie. It's a tool that turns your words into videos uh, using AI and a bunch of other cool technology you hired an agency to do that, the expected cost of a 30 second um, internet video is, is between 800 and 1200 dollars. For a TV ad, it's between five and 12,000 dollars, right? Production time, hours to weeks. For us, everything we do is measured by minutes. So by enabling and empowering those of us who don't have the tools, we're helping that market. We're also seeing video pro video editors are using it now because what we've done, you know, and I talk to these folks all the time because there's so many of them using our product and, and I've worked with them over the years and their reaction is not like, oh my God, you're taking my job. The reaction very quickly is, oh, I can do the fun parts of my job with more time, right? Okay. And that's where to me, that summarizes what AI assistant is supposed to do. Take right. all the boring work, give you the fun parts. maybe get going if you are a creator trying to use these tools today. That's right. But if uh, when you apply for the beta, if you tell them uh, Evo or I sent you, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try to bump you up in the queue. Um, the queue's getting a little longer, but we're scaling quickly and, and trying to let as many people as fast as we can. Excellent. So anyhow, welcome to Augie. This is the product uh, that you're seeing here. And the basic user interface is pretty simple. You've got your preview. You've got your timeline, storyboard, film strip. People call these different things, but basically this is all the content that's gonna be in your video. And then you have the transcript. And for anyone who's ever done video editing, what you'll notice right away is 
where's all the stuff that I'm supposed to do? I have to drag this to here and coordinate this there and push this thing over there. We realized that if we want to make average people, if we want to give the you's and me's of the world the ability to do some video editing, we're going to have to make all that much, much easier. So our system is designed to use the transcript to control the entire video content. So I have, let, let's listen to it again for the first just few seconds here, and you'll see what I mean. I often get asked, what are all the cool features my product has? So here's what you can do in Augie. Okay. So I often get asked, right? And that's why you saw it switch to this what can you do image. That's because we use the, these little green bars here are what divide up from one shot to another. So I'm just going to move this one down here, for example. And you can see now we've actually changed which words are in which segment. And so I can keep doing this till I get it exactly at the timing that I particularly want. Ah. Similarly, I can very easily create new segments. And then when I create a new segment, you can see here it shows this little static image. That's on purpose. So I can go now over to replace image and it says you can turn. So I'm just gonna type in those words. And what this will do is search for our clip library. We have a partnership with Getty. We also have integrations with Bing and Jiffy. Uh, as well as Lexica, so that wherever you might want to find an image from, you can. And so I can go browse through a variety of options if I want something, again, you know, I'm a very giffy, whimsical kind of guy, but if I want to get a bit more serious, I'll go to stock photography and look for something a bit more well done or higher quality imagery. So there we go. We can, we'll just use that one for now. Um, and then you can apply simple filters, just like you do in apps like Instagram and Snapchat and all those. Mm -hmm. You can make easy, easy video effects. So if you remember the, the, the beginning of the video, you saw it full screen um, and a Ken Burns effect. So Ken Burns is the pen scan. If I want to make mm -hmm. it zoom in, you can turn these boring. You can make it zoom in just by tapping this one button or zoom out instead. And we can just see the you results can turn of that. These boring. Now you see here, you got me in the middle. That's because over here in the placement tab, we've tried to make some of the more advanced features of apps like Premiere Pro and others super accessible. If I want to be just me, if I want to show the image that was found, there's a variety of fun picture-in-picture -picture options. I can actually control which one's in the foreground and background if I want to. Uh, I can do the split screen effect as well. Uh, I can e turn off that closed caption in case you've been annoyed by that this whole time. So part of the point of this is to make it super, super fast and easy. I can upload on my own, or I can also generate a piece of content to go right in the middle of my video. So I want to pause there because I know I was showing a lot all at once, um, but I want to pause in there. You want to see if there's anything you want me to show off in particular or, or keep moving. Well, there's a lot of things, actually. I, I thought about, for example, the YouTuber or the music video creator who's trying to take their existing clip and, and maybe do something more interesting with it. And uh, I remember seeing the replace image and you just showed the, the generate on a, on a stable diffusion prompt. I was wondering if you could show us how you maybe replace something that isn't working for you in your storyline and then uh, make sure that it is a cohesive piece before you publish it. Sure, I'm gonna do a picture of a webcam just for sake of it. And this is, as you said, stable diffusion. This will go off and generate, et cetera. But uh, I'll skip for a moment to show you one that I've already done. So in this case, I took a little scene out of a movie I like. I just took eight seconds of it that paired up really, really nicely to uh, gender media. So here you go. We got 12 bottles of water, 56 beers, two vodkas, four whiskey, six bottles of wine, tequila, Nutella, cheese, steaks, a Milky Way. So... I like to show that one because what your audience may or may not know is every image other than the Milky Way was generative, right? And so when you pause on them, you can certainly see certain that some of the artifacts, the words aren't quite right, et cetera. Mm -hmm. yes. But it shows how in the context of telling a story, of bringing a narrative to life, some of those details actually don't quite matter that much anymore, right? And so that's just one example of uh, how we're using generative media so far. Um, but we're also using it to tell the whole story. So I'm happy to move into showing you some of that unless there's a piece of this one I missed so far. I am super curious as a video creator, um, how do 
rights management issues. You mentioned that you have deals with Getty and, and these other uh, repos. How, do, how does that work as a creator? Does that end up becoming like a massive description line or does that information get, get shared or carried through somehow? We've tried to make it as easy as possible. First of all, all of the content that will surface to you, uh, you have the rights to use in your video. So if you used our replace image feature, everything that comes up, you can you can put in there. Uh, we will respond to all DMCA takedown requests in case something comes through, but we're using the APIs of those companies where they've taken on that burden already of working with the content industry to make sure things are okay. Um, similarly, but, but similar to products like iMovie or Premiere Pro, if you yourself go and source some clip that we don't, you know, we don't know where it came from, we're not, we're not doing anything about that because generally speaking, the, the tools, you know, we'll do our best to make sure we're not uh, making things wrong, uh, but it's impossible for us to be absolutely perfect to make sure others don't as well. Right. So, and, yeah. and, and your mileage may vary in terms of what fair use looks like where you are in the world. So yeah. YouTube has different roles and, and your mileage may vary across the board. Well, once you've done all the replacements you want, you can hit publish, take your MP4 to go. So we can do all sorts of things like that. But what I want to show you is what's coming into the product. And we haven't made this available in the beta yet. So I'm going to show you this from one of our internal servers. Uh, but we've integrated a full GPT-3 chat engine Effectively, if you're familiar with uh, ChatGPT, which I'm assuming everybody uh, who, who follows this is going to be, uh, we're working very quickly right now to be as smart as the ability to say, make me a 30-second video about X. And whatever X is, it's going to have found their info, found the images, put it together, and shows up in your inbox 15 minutes later. And so let me show you a demo of what the potential of that is. We do have most of the parts working. We just don't have it as a seamless user experience yet. So that's all we're waiting for. It's not the tech. It's just, wow. it's just you know, bringing it all together. I love uh, this. But this is built in the Augie tool, right? So this is the same part of the same right. package. Perfect. That's yeah, right. bring it in. So what I did is I said, write me a narration for a video promo for 10 fictional awkward reality TV shows. <laughs> and... I, did, I will say I did a little tiny bit of like, I swapped out a couple of words here and there, but for the most part, this is all, uh, this is all from, what, from what the system generated. And then so this has gone through Augie. Awkward entertainment. Sorry, this has gone through Augie to add all the visuals. Are you ready for some cringeworthy, awkward entertainment? Look no further than our new lineup of reality TV shows. From The Breakup Show, where couples publicly break up on camera, to The Awkward Family Reunion, where estranged family members are brought together for a weekend of uncomfortable interactions. And for the job seekers, the job interview, where job candidates are put through a series of increasingly embarrassing and awkward interviews. We also have the first date experiment, where strangers go on a series of blind first dates in front of a live audience, the confession room, where people confess their deepest secrets and regrets to a panel of strangers. The X Factor, where exes compete against each other in challenges to determine who is the better match for the XE. The mm -hmm. roommate swap, where people swap homes and roommates for a week, leading to inevitable awkward encounters, and the awkward talent show, where contestants perform their least polished talents in front of a live audience. The parent-child yeah. showdown, where adult children confront their parents about long-held grudges and unresolved issues, and the awkward house party, where strangers are invited to an uncomfortable social gathering where they have to navigate through the awkward situations. So two of the most awkward and entertaining reality TV shows only on GPT TV. So that was entirely created and voiced through uh, AI. We've done a partnership with uh, Eleven Labs, uh, which is a great uh, artificial voice startup. Part of what is so good about their tech as you probably could hear in that video is it's designed more around overall narratives as opposed to individual words or phrases. Mm -hmm. um, so let's do this, though. I'm going to show you how uh, how that one got generated. Sound good? Yes, I'd love to see it. All right. So we're going to bring in. Yes. OK, so this is again on an internal server, but we're looking forward to making this available to everybody very soon where we can go to hit generate. And now we have a few options. And so the first option is as simple as type a subject, have a generated video. Uh, we also, where you can just cut and paste the URL. Oh. 
And we have cut and paste the URL with some options if you want to choose a male or female voice, length of time. And then we have the, the one that we're most excited about. This is uh, our storytelling assistant. And so what we're going to do now, um, I, I do have handy for, for our conversation here. I'm a, I'm a huge hockey fan. So this is a link to the Wikipedia page about my team, the Montreal Canadiens, in the 1993 Stanley Cup. And so what I want to do is make a, let's call it a 45-second video using a gender, a neutral voice targeting, uh, let's just target my generation. Uh, let's target younger than me. Let's go to the, to, the, to the Zoomers, as they call them. And let's give it an, uh, play, an uplifting tone. And pick a perspective. By the way, when I mentioned we're working on the UX, we're working on the UX. Yeah. Uh, but but this will go off and now generate a transcript and do all those fun things. What I'm, um, what I'm going to do, though, is take you into a already done version of it. So we'll pull it back out of the oven. Um, but this one is the output of something like that. And so this is, again, an artificially generated uh, script entirely from a web page. Uh, mm -hmm. voiced by AI. There's actually one glitch in the voice that um, hockey fans might notice. I pulled <laughs> it into Augie and you can see what it's created here. So this is, again, less than, this is minutes of work. The 1993 Stanley Cup final saw the Montreal Canadiens take on the Los Angeles Kings. The Canadiens, led by goaltender Patrick Roy, were looking to win their 24th Stanley Cup in franchise history. The Kings, led by Wayne Gretzky, were looking to win their first ever Stanley Cup. After a hard-fought series, the Canadians emerged victorious in five games. Montreal won the first two games at home before dropping Game 3 in Los Angeles. They then won Games 4 and 5 to clinch the series and their 24th Stanley Cup title. Roy was awarded the Conn Smythe Trophy as playoff MVP for his stellar performance throughout the playoffs. All right, so we've got background there. You've got a fair amount of, like, easy to put together b-roll or documentary footage or news clips youtube music videos I, I i mean there's at least a dozen more use cases i can think of educational for good <laughs> there's so many That's the one that I, I, I always like to tell people is education if you've ever had kids and i have three if you've ever watched them watch any form of educational video online you know it's it's you get it is what it is right I've show, I've taken lectures they've watched, brought them into Augie, done the picture in picture thing, just picture in picture, not doing too extravagant stuff. And you can see the retention rates go skyrocketing. In fact, we have now made hundreds of videos on YouTube just experimenting, taking other people's content and remixing it, you know, stuff that's that's available, not for profit, um, but just to show the, you know, the A versus B. And what we're seeing is the engagement times in our YouTube videos are longer than the average. The retention is, sorry, the engagement rates are, are, are higher than average and the retention is longer than average wow. uh, than, than at typical talking head videos. The, you know, the ROI on this is unquestionable for anybody who needs, needs to use video for a purpose. One of, the, one of the sort of hidden things here is video needs to have a purpose, right? Like we don't make video for the sake of making video. We make video for the sake of accomplishing a, a, an objective. So our goal is to is to basically make that objective um, more more readily at people's hands when they when they need it to be. Right. That that storytelling tool alone, I can see that for a teacher being able to take hours of work and make it you know five ten minutes of work. That that video, how long does that take you to make? You said something like five ten minutes in the in the first iteration. What we're finding, well, so the system will create the original video in just a few minutes. Right now in the beta, on the servers we're on, it's down to about, it started at 10 minutes in January 1. We're now down to about two, three minutes. It should be under a minute by the time we're like really in, in the late stage of beta. Right, so if you're trying to make, let's just say you are trying to make a new video on your homepage to promote your latest book and you, you know, you know the video is going to help because you can give your own voice over, explain what the reader is going to get out of it. Making if you hired an agency to do that, the expected cost of a thirty-second um, internet video is is between eight hundred and twelve hundred dollars. For a TV ad, it's between five and twelve thousand dollars. Right, production time hours to weeks. For us, everything we do is measured by minutes. So, by enabling and empowering those of us who don't have the tools, we're helping that market. We're also seeing video pro video editors are using it now because. 
what we've done, you know, and I talk to these folks all the time because there's so many of them using our product and, and I've worked with them over the years and their reaction's not like, oh my God, you're taking my job. The reaction very quickly is, oh, I can do the fun parts of my job with more time, right? Okay. And that's where, to me, that summarizes what AI assistant is supposed to do. Take right. all the boring work, give you the fun parts. Do you think because these are sort of short, easy clips, so it keeps you interested as it moves through the story? Or it, what do you attribute that to? I have two theses. My first thesis is that just, you know, the picture, take th picture tells a thousand words. If I'm talking to you about the history of, um, I'm looking for something around my room to talk about, but the history of, of printers, mm -hmm. right? Even if you were interested in printers, if I were to say, oh, the first printer ever made was six feet long by 10 feet wide, whatever, whatever, like there's nothing like what you, you just want to see that right here, right now, right? Like I'm like, I, you know, I, you want to show me, don't tell me, right? Um, so that's, that's the first reason we think that the videos are getting more engagement. You're seeing stuff that you want to be seeing. But the second thing, and again, I cannot back this up with data at this point, but we've spent three years now in this environment. Right. The, the, most people have been on Zoom calls for a significant, and I know we're not on Zoom, but mm -hmm. most people have been on Zoom calls for the better part of the past three years. And I think we're a little tired of talking heads. And so if all we're doing is giving people a fresh thing to look at and a new way to be entertained, informed, uh, exploring new topics, whatever it is, then to me that like we're that's where now, AugX Labs, and specifically Augie, the tool for video making, that's meetaugie.com, or going to AugX Labs to connect with all of Jeremy's team. Um, I'd love to hear, just as we're going out, a little bit of what's up next for you. What's on the roadmap? Sure. <laughs> well, we're it's finishing up the parts I just gave you the sneak preview of. It's giving everybody that access to start with a simple prompt, start with a simple uh, web page, start with anything that gets going faster, right? Everybody's too busy to this, to that, we get it. So our goal is to speed up as much things as we can, which means more ways in. So you're gonna see from us very soon a web page where you'll be able to literally paste a URL, even as an unregistered user. Uh, so you paste your website, paste your email address, 50 minutes later, you'll get a video in your inbox, right? Like taking all that friction out. The second thing we're doing is adding more robust uh, storytelling capabilities. So we're adding a lot of, we have like two transition effects right now. We have like 50 coming. We have four closed captioning styles, dozens coming, including all sorts of cool effects. Like we have this one where, you, where the closed captioning words can like flow, fly around the screen and all just trying to make things more fun. And again, you know, if we can make creativity more joyful and experience, then that's, that's what we're here to do. So all of the next things that are coming are all around that um, background music, more visuals, more more ways to do more things. And at the same time, keeping it so easy that you can tell, you know, tell your story and turn it into a video with, with no more efforts than what I just showed you. I'm excited for all of those initiatives. The music side, for example, just being able to put together the whole package in one place is, is a huge boon to the creator to being able to not have to move things to 10 different places before you create. And for those of you who are just getting started in generative media and you want to dive into these topics, uh, the book is out. This is Prompt Craft, and I will go ahead and put a link up to that for you. But if you are trying to find more resources and specifically if you are looking for information on how to get started or how to write effective prompts, uh, whether that's in a generative art tool, a writing tool like ChatGPT, or for video as well. Uh, that book is up both in paperback and in Kindle on Amazon. So I hope you go ahead and check that out. I do give regular workshops. So if you're trying to get your head around how this fits into your concept strategies as well, we can do that with you. So I'm going to go ahead and call it a day, but thank you, Jeremy, for taking some time with us. Uh, we're going to stop this recording now, and thank you for joining us, everyone. This is Evo at RealityCraft signing off. I hope you'll check out Augie at augxlabs.com, and please let us know what's working for you in your prompt craft. Uh, if you're looking for a workshop or you're looking for a special type of initiative, please reach out. We do consults and strategy work as well. So thank you from all of us here at Reality Craft. Have a great day.
Yeah, yeah, yeah.